Well, my friends, welcome back. I am your host, Christian Watson, as always. Good to be back with you You guys here today about this very important topic. So, I find that during times of crisis, our principles become very malleable. Uh, This is where the old cliched adage, where rubber meets the road, when rubber meets the road, so to speak, comes into effect. Because it's one thing to profess to have a belief. It is another thing to be able to enact and practice that belief 100% in reality or to try to practice it 99%. So if I have belief that taxation is bad because it steals things from me, which you know you have no right to, which is why it's stealing, and that it is a violation of my rights and therefore should be redressed in the form of a payment back to me and a perhaps a request that I pay you as opposed to you taking my stuff – then what's going to happen is I can't really fight, like enact that belief into reality unless I evade taxes or whatever, and that brings a penalty. So what am I going to do? Am I going to do that? Am I going to endanger my livelihood? Or am I going to simply keep paying taxes and fight against it in different ways? Most of us would do the latter. Some of us are willing to take a step on the, on the ledge and do that. <laughs> but what is more concerning is taxes are more of an absolute what I'm about to talk about right now is not an absolute whatsoever. So a lot of Americans are losing their principles. A lot of conservative Americans, libertarian Americans, are losing their principles because they are complaining over a $600 stimulus check as opposed to a $1,200 stimulus check, which we had earlier this year. And, of course, as this um, article out on CNBC mentions a lot of Americans are very, very upset. Many are happy that they have this sort of shot in the arm uh, due to all this chaos that is happening. But a lot of them are upset that it's not, it's not enough. It's not sufficient enough. Many of them are drowning in house payments and everything. Many of them have kids. Many of them can't get a job beyond part-time work, which isn't enough. Many have student loans. And I get all of this stuff. My friends, when, I, when this pandemic first began and when its genesis emerged in America. I was laid off from my job. I was a host at a Mexican restaurant. I was laid off. I was completely laid off. I struggled for months to pay my bills. I had to live on crumbs. It was absolutely disappointing and upsetting. And I just, I didn't know what to do. Then eventually when an opportunity arose, which thankfully for me it did, I got that opportunity and I worked that opportunity as much as I possibly could. For many of us, opportunities do not arise. For some of us, They do. But regardless of what your temporal circumstance is, I must encourage you, especially those of you who may be conservative or libertarian, who believe that government needs to be small and eliminate needs to have a very minimal influence in your life, I must encourage you, keep your principles. Don't allow your circumstances to destroy your principles. When you allow your circumstances to interact with your principles in a negative way, in a way that negates your principles and gives weight to your circumstances, what you do, you do a few things actually. Number one, you dilute the end goal of those circumstances, right? So if you're concerned about paying your rent so you can subsist, so you can live, so your family can live, when you say my rights or my principles matter a little bit less than me being able to pay my rent or whatever, you're basically destroying the foundation you're trying to protect by being able to pay your rent. You see what I'm saying? That doesn't mean don't pay your rent. No, please do. Please. Don't. Please. We have an eviction crisis in America. Please do. If you can, please do. That simply means you have to keep in mind the lie of the truth, the light of these principles, which animates your life animate your being. These aren't simply a simple abstraction that you get from some of the academic text. These are things. Your rights are things which animate you and allow you to live morally and righteously, allow you to live ethically, allow you to live in the best way that you possibly can live as a peaceful human being existing in this part of space. But to see so many conservative and libertarians say, oh my, we don't have a $1,600 check or whatever. Therefore, let's get mad at Congress My friends, when you erect a standard of value that is predicated upon the approbation and the work of someone else rather than your own work, you have no one but yourself to blame when you're disappointed. The government is not an efficient dispenser of things. We know this, which is one of the reasons why many libertarians and conservatives don't don't really like the government. It's not efficient. But that's just one thing. I mean, 
It also has a delimited, a specific enumerated set of duties upon which it is supposed to build its actions. And if it doesn't, it is violating its proper conduct, its proper role. And that's the argument I like to make a lot, but when we're hurting, we're in the midst of our pain, it's very hard for us to be able to embrace philosophical arguments or principled arguments, even though those principles and that philosophy animates us and lives with us every single day. Philosophy is in play. It is animated. It is working throughout this coronavirus pandemic situation just in a very different way. The government is taking upon its superficially, artificially imposed role of being a caretaker of the people, which reflects a philosophy of positive rights. The government gives you things that you need to live. Not that the government protects that which you already have, which allows you to live. My friends, even in the midst of financial hardship, you have everything that you need to live. You as a human being, as a human being who was motivated and moved by reason, moved by reason that desire to ensure that your rights are protected, your family are protected, you have everything you need to live. You have every foundational tool you need to build a brick house out of ashes, to make shelter out of sticks. You have everything you need. And these aren't just platitudes. I know it because of the resilience of the American individual, which went to the frontier and explored vast lands unknown, went through all the old buffalo grazing the lands, dealt with all those ravenous people raiding their farms, had nothing, had no money. Where many of them were debtors. They established the entire Midwestern United States. They established the entire Western United States, and they did it on that faith that they had the ability they needed to have to be able to persist. Look, my friends, do what you must. Even the most principled among us, a Ayn Rand took benefits in her dying days. Doesn't mean that was the right thing to do, but she had to do what she had to do. I have taken out student loans, something I think should be drastically overhauled. Do what you have to do to survive. But I just beg you, my friends, don't lose sight of your principles. Don't begin making the government your standard of value. Don't lose sight of how powerful you are in your individual capacity as a human being, as a rational agent in this world. Because the more you do that, the less power you have to survive after your financial maladies are cured. You'll have a moral malady you have to fix. And moral maladies are far harder to fix than a financial malady. I promise you. Think on it. As always, my friends, I love you to death. Stay safe. Protect yourself, your failings. Most importantly, please stay pensive. Love you guys. Have a good Christmas.